Okay. And now we can. I just record, and the recording will be shared later. And as you know, uh, since our course haven't yet appeared in the Moodle, uh, maybe they it, they will appear this afternoon or maybe tomorrow. So uh, we will still use this WebEx, okay? And I will give you the uh, link for the recordings, okay, later, okay, to one of the students, and you can uh, watch the recordings through the uh, through the uh, link later, okay? Okay, let me let me start our uh, our course by going through uh, my, my introductions okay so this is a syllabus introductions for uh, engineering of math okay so if you see from the uh, slides okay my name is Iman you can call me professor Iman or uh, simply just professor uh, it's fine so I will be your engineering mathematics instructor this summer and hopefully we can have an enjoyable course um, since this is also my first time teaching this material so i i'm not really sure uh if i can manage the time uh, very well okay but i already make some uh, arrangements for the contents and hopefully we can uh, at least okay, at least uh, cover most of the topics okay at least okay if you uh if you doesn't really hear clearly please let me know okay if my voice is not clear or if the uh, display is not clear please please let me know okay you can chat in in the chat box okay all right then uh this is uh, uh my my uh outline for our course so we have, of course, three uh, three credits. Uh, that means that we need to finish uh, 54 hours. And based on what I have prepared, uh, we will start by today and end. It, it can be 1st August or 3rd August. Okay, it, it depends. Okay, it depends on, on how we are going to... Uh, going to uh, progress in, in, the, in the course, okay? The textbook is Advanced Engineering Mathematics, okay, uh, seven edition. Uh, uh, the author is Dennis Zill. I believe you are, you guys already have at least the PDF file for the sixth edition, and that's okay. It's the same, same materials, okay, same materials, same uh, chapter, same topics. Okay. Our class uh, Friday, Monday. Uh, so uh, Friday morning, only morning, Monday morning and afternoon, uh, and Wednesday um, morning and afternoon. So we will have another class later afternoon, okay? Uh, my suggestions for this class, okay? You need to be able to tackle um, calculus, okay? So calculus one, calculus two, I hope, okay? You, are, you guys are already familiar with that. Uh, maybe I will review a little bit, but not really that much. So I hope you can review uh, by yourself, okay? Individual review, okay? And as I said in the beginning, that our uh, materials will be uh, recorded, okay? Will be recorded, and I will I will give you the link later on. And for the lectures itself, uh, I cover my plan for for the summer course. We will have uh, the, the the big topic. Okay, the first is the first order uh, differential equation. Okay. Uh, this the second one is the second order and higher order. So second and higher. Okay, mostly second. Okay, because higher. Um, I think the, the most number, uh, maybe three or four, okay, uh, because if, if, if it's too much and it's, it's actually uh, complicated to solve, actually. So that's the second topics. The third topic is the Laplace transformation, okay, the Laplace transformations. Uh, this is related to uh, uh, 
uh, later on related to transformations, okay, uh, in which one of the transformation is in the chap in the the fourth topic, which is the matrix, okay, the, the matrix. So uh, vectors, I will just cover a few, but mostly this is about matrix, okay, finding the determinants, eigenvalues, uh, diagonalizations, and the last part will be the factor calculus. Uh, we will learn how to take on the integrals in a new notations, which we call the line integrals, the surface integrals, and later uh, we will have the um, the flux, the Gauss theorem, and so on and so forth. Uh, but of course, um, I think some some small parts in each topics, uh, maybe I will skip that out because we are, I think we don't really have much time to uh, to cover all, but <clears throat> I think for um, for engineering math in general, uh, I will cover the most uh, the most necessary, the most important uh, topics, okay? And uh, in details, what I have in mind is, uh, so today we will have course introductions. And I think, I think uh, this is my plan if we are, uh, that we don't really need like, uh, uh, maybe practice exercise. Uh, this is uh, my optimist plan. So probably, probably, uh, we will just take slowly at the beginning, but at the middle we will go fast. Okay. So this week we will just cover really um, basic, okay, like the introductions. That like so maybe this this chapter one one here refers to um, the topic, the first topic, the the differential equation, the first order. I will explain in more details after this presentations. Okay, but this is my my plan. So after we say let let's say we have um, the first topic, second topic, and maybe a third topic. This chapter, uh, like topic one, two, three, that will be uh, our uh, midterm contents. Or, or the midterm contents is the introductions, the topic one, topic two. That will be the midterm. Uh, we will see uh, when we are at least after this week, okay, after this, uh, after Friday, uh, when we will have or what topics we will have in our midterm, okay. Since this is an online course, I need to prepare the online platform for quiz and midterm and also for final exam. So please uh, wait for the, that platform. Uh, I will set the platform maybe this week, uh, at least for quiz or homework. We need to try out the platform for you so that you can try out. Okay. So in the middle week, okay, as I said, we will have midterm. So probably in the second week, we will have a quiz. So the quiz is outside of the class. Okay. So you can take the quiz anytime. Okay. You can take the quiz at night, and maybe I will give you a uh, range, maybe three days to finish the quiz or maybe four days. So it's like a homework, so quiz or homework, okay? And please don't miss out, okay? don't miss out the homework or quiz. If not, then it will be very difficult for you for score, for scoring system, okay? For scoring system. So that's the midterm. And then after that, we will move to the, uh, the matrix and the vector calculus okay. and after we finish this matrix and vector calculus that will be the uh, the final exam topics okay so final exam will be about the matrix and the vector calculus so uh, we have I prepare to to schedule so final exam in the August 1st or August 3rd it depends on our our class. If we can move smoothly as our uh, plan here, then maybe at the first August we will have the the final. If not, then probably probably the third. Okay, I'll get the third. So maybe this will be the review the review class. Okay, 
and this will be maybe some materials that we still have in progress we can still have in this uh, Friday class okay so that's um, um, my plan okay my plan I, I will discuss more uh, after this presentations okay about this syllabus okay evaluations method okay so we will have a 25% quiz for homework so it's quite quite huge so I, I hope you don't forget the, the homework okay? and the midterm is 30% final exam is 35 and per, participation or attendance is, is 10% okay okay I think uh, for the quiz itself I, I'm planning to have uh, three at least three quizzes get three quizzes okay or maybe four it depends on, on how our, our progress okay Now I would like to know uh, from all of you, please, uh, yeah, please check these presentations. Okay, please answer. Have you passed calculus one and two? I would like to know, just to know. Okay, if you answered no, that means you haven't passed both calculus one and two. If you pass maybe calculus one, but calculus two haven't you can check the third options or maybe you fail calculus one but manage to uh, pass through the calculus two please answer also the third options i would like to know the background so i can have uh, more details and maybe um, I, I can give you some some tips okay for this engineering of math okay okay uh, I will wait for eight students answering. Okay, okay, we we'll wait. Okay, because we have uh, eleven students, including me, it is twelve. So please, please answer this one. Okay, uh, okay, maybe you are using different device. Okay, at least I can see that uh, from eight students, half of eight students, you guys passing uh, the calculus already. So I think that's that's okay. Okay, uh, next is the uh, please use your student ID. Okay, use your student ID. Our name is also fine, but actually the question is just to ask your your ID. You're just asking your your ID. Okay, waiting for the others. If you want to, so sometimes in our course I will give you this type of questions in 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 the middle of class or maybe in the at the end of the class. Usually at the end of the class, to check your comprehension, to check your feedbacks. Okay. Maybe you, you guys uh, having some problems or maybe um, to check your understanding on, on our course, okay? Okay, just write your student ID. Just write your student ID. This is just uh, just a dummy questions just to check just to check uh, the attendance actually for today's class I, ju I just would like to know okay there's a timer so usually um, you will see this kind of uh, small quiz pop up in in class okay okay so thank you for your attention okay so usually I would give some points okay, if if you have your answer or correct answer but yeah this is all all correct okay and also your expectation from the course okay like of course you want to get past the course right but i want to know more the details like maybe if you want you can also telling me uh, like maybe when you take the course before you fail fail the course and why you fail the course and 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 maybe you can tell me the course before is not really in detail or maybe not really understand what is going on on the class so you expect to understand from your 
previous course that you have failed before so i i can understand uh okay laplace transform okay this is very specific okay okay that's good because i think laplace will be important if you are dealing with uh uh especially programming okay you, at least you need to understand the logic behind the laplace Okay, any, anyone you can you can just uh, write anything okay okay uh, okay try to enjoy the class okay okay good good okay you can if you already write you can write again if you want like maybe you want to uh, instead of maybe just understand maybe you can reflect what you did maybe or maybe what you have before uh, what kind of questions late uh, uh, in your exam before that you don't really get a clue or maybe don't don't get the the idea of what what is happening okay like maybe you 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 learn factors you learn laplace but not really sure what it is and how do we um how do we understand the materials okay 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 i think uh that's okay yeah that's the end of the presentations now uh would like to i would like to give you some uh some another contents uh, check Okay. Let me share again the, uh, the screen too. Okay, now you are seeing my screen. So uh, let me just get through of what we are going to cover. Uh, okay, this is five topics. Okay, this will be our main topics. So first is we are going to have the first order differential equation. But actually, actually before the first order, we will have some introductions first. Okay, so what is differential equation and 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 several uh, several introductions in in uh, based on our textbook. Okay, before we move on to this uh, first order. Okay, so first order. You will see some uh, some terms, direction fields or slope fields, autonomous first order, uh, separable, linear, exact, solution by substitutions. Um, the higher order, you will see linear equations, reduction of order, constant coefficient, and determined coefficient, variation of parameters, and probably some parts will be skipped, like cauchy euler equation. Maybe that one I will skip. Uh, initial value problems, uh, green function. Some of this probably will be skipped. Some some of this. The Laplace transform. Uh, at least the first four is a must for Laplace, but for Dirac delta and the system of linear differential equation, these two can be skipped. It can be skipped. It depends. Okay, it depends. And uh, I think this will be next week. And the vector, I think the first two, I will just explain really fast for the factor space and the gram smith probably skip, probably skip. But we are going to have more details in the matrix, like matrix algebra, determinants, um, 
and the important thing in this topics is the eigenvalue okay this will be the, the important one eigenvalue and diagonalization okay this too is, is the core in in uh, engineering of mathematics this for uh, the the algebra linear equation determinants inverse Kramer's rule they are all I think some of you already have this in high school maybe and maybe in the basic of math we already learned this but so this will be review okay, but still important uh, vector calculus I will try to review some parts that are important and you will be using that part as uh, frequently frequently so a little bit review and then moving on to this divergence curl line integrals uh, Green's theorem surface Stokes theorem but I think for divergence theorem although I write Stokes and divergence as optional Stokes maybe we will have okay, because it's still doable not really that complicated but for divergence theorem it's like the Gauss theorem this it's optional maybe we can skip but we will see if we can uh, we can have this okay and then the course schedule this is as i mentioned in the presentation before uh, we will start today introductions uh, of the syllabus introduction of the course itself and then we move on to uh, the introduction in the textbook and move to at least first order okay the first order differential equations okay and maybe the friday still the first order but maybe finishing and then we have some practice in the friday so 2.1 the higher order may be on monday okay so we will uh, delay this to here okay and because we will skip some parts uh, the laplace still still in in schedule next week okay the laplace still in next week i'm planning to have the midterm uh, monday but we can we can reschedule the midterm to friday that's okay okay we will see okay we will see uh, maybe we can discuss uh, this week or maybe next week for for the midterm okay and as i mentioned uh from week three week four this will be the last uh, two chapters at least last two chapters okay this will be the, the final exam okay so this is the reference the reference that we will have we will have uh, I'm using the textbook uh, seven editions but if you have six uh, that's okay still uh, usable and uh, reference um, if you have or maybe you want to read more you can read more the crazy uh, it's also advanced engineering mathematics in my bachelor i'm usually using this crazy books also maybe old editions crazy and uh, the wolfram alpha for calculations i'm i forgot to mention one more uh, actually if you one we can have the GeoGebra uh, for for graphing GeoGebra.com and this is evaluation method as I mentioned okay okay I think that is uh, just to add my presentation for the syllabus and introduction okay let me stop sharing okay and usually I will using another device to explain let me go through and check whether we can have this as okay wait for a moment Okay, can you see the screen now? 
Okay, can you see the screen? It, it's from my iPad. Can you see? Okay, okay, thank you. Okay, thank you, thank you. Okay, so we would like to start with uh, some, some basics. Okay, some basics. Okay, so engineering math one. Okay, yeah, this is summer course, so yeah, it's very hard, right? <laughs> okay, let me start with the calculus. Okay. What what we need and uh, what you need to review. Okay, so calculus. So what we need is first is of course calculus will be related to um, derivatives, right? And integrations. This is the main the main idea of calculus. In calculus one, you learn so cal one, you learn the single variable, right? Single variable. In calculus two, you learn multi variable. Okay. Okay, and then in derivative, there are some some essential parts that you need you need to use frequently right we can say the tools for the for derivative using the ddx right if this is a function y or f of x we can write like that or uh, we can write as simply as dy over dx okay integration as you know uh, this is probably the f of x dx or if you remember sometimes we are using t for parametric or t for uh, fundamental theorem of calculus if you remember okay and uh, the first idea for um, for the first chapter in our engineering of math is it's about the differential equations right differential equations so differential equation is actually we are writing for example dy dx let me just write dy over dx equal y okay let me just write that so if we have this okay then if we want to solve this then we need to think uh, if there is a function okay a function that we have uh, that its derivative is equal with original function. This is what is basically says. Okay, if you have dy over dx equal y, but and this is also one of the differential equations example okay now perhaps okay if you think okay if you think from from the past from what you learn in the calculus you have some functions right you have some functions that probably you are memorizing them like uh, we have a polynomials right we have the trigonometric And it's inverse, right? Okay. And we have exponential, right? We have exponential e to the x. And remember, when we are derived this, it's going to be its original function, right? So perhaps, perhaps we can say that one solution that are plausible for this dy over dx equal y is probably e to the x. Okay, probably that. And that is one one way or another to find a solution. Okay, so at least you need to have uh, a good background in in basic calculus. Okay, and another function, the inverse of the of the e to the x. Okay, if you have the inverse, so if f of x is e to the x the inverse is we can say the log or let me just say ln x right okay 
And I hope you are familiar with the graphs, okay? For example, you have um, the recipe reciprocal function like 1 over x 1 over x squared I hope you're still familiar with the graph okay sine cosine tangent well how about the graph e to the x log ln x what is the graph okay I hope you still remember that and then some tools to derive like for example if we have the f g okay so if we have a function f of x and then multiply with g of x and we need to find the derivative of this multiplication okay. we call this a product rule right we call this a product rule we have f prime g of x plus g prime or maybe writing with x to, to make it more complete right we have this and from here okay from here actually if we can say that this is becomes our dfdg let's say we, this become dfdg and this become gdf and become fdg okay and if we rewrite this and make it fdg equal dfdg minus gdf okay if we take these integrations of all things here we take integrations with respect to let's say with respect to x for its its own uh, function and with the chain rule okay, again that is a concept that you need to familiar the chain rule so if we have uh, let me say uh, dy over dx we can write this as, for example, we have um, maybe u, maybe it's more familiar, du, and then this is du dx, right? We can have this general uh, applications. And if we have this integrations, this is precisely giving you f dg and differentiate with respect to x with the chain rule this giving you f g minus g df if you remember this is the same terms as our integration by parts okay and this is somehow still we are going to use it in some parts in our course in the engineering of math so i hope some calculations some um, some tools that you have learned in calculus one or two I hope you're still familiar with that if not uh, I can share some tips and uh, at least how to use that and how you to um, to understand in a, in a in a better way okay so that's that's a little bit of calculus that, that we need okay at least for the first half okay? for the first uh, first order uh, differential equations okay okay again that, it, it doesn't really need to be taken notes this part okay but but you can you can maybe you can check if you are maybe having tr trouble with your calculus one and two um, later you can email me if you want to review some parts of, of it Okay, that's that's the uh, just a, a little bit uh, intro for the calculus. Okay, now we move on to the definitions. Okay, for the first part of our introduction, this is related to differential equations. So what is differential equations? Let, let me just simply write DE okay, for differential equation. So to begin with, the differential equations, okay. Let me just give you this, this definitions, okay, to, to start, okay. 
an equation containing derivative of one or more dependent variables with respect to one or more independent variables is said to be differential equation well, perhaps this too much words in it too much words but if you take the differentials that we did before dy over dx is equal y this is also differential equation okay. so in a simple way in a simple words de or differential equation means that any equations that have differentials okay it can be first order second order okay So let me give you some uh, some 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 idea, okay? Because we are going to look differential in many topics, especially in physics. Okay? For example, uh, we have dy over dt equal k a constant, and then multiply one with y. This is familiar right it's the exponential growth maybe it's too broad maybe and this is also in physics we call this the Newton's Newton's law of cooling And this we call ODE. This type we call ODE. Or it's just ordinary differential equation. Ordinary differential equation. The other, uh, let me write, let me skip this a little bit down here. The other part that we actually have is we call the PDE. The partial differential equation but we will not cover in our topics okay but let me just give you the the, um, the example we have the uh, du dt this is the heat equation let me just give you one example okay And we can also have, uh, if we have more than one equations, maybe several equations, for example, we have y prime equal x and then x prime equal y. This is we call the system of the E. Okay. Now we will, we, have, we, have, we will cover the ODE. Okay. First, we will cover the ODE. The PDE and system of differential equations we will cover uh, for PDE I will not cover for system of differential equation maybe later I will I will check whether we will cover or not okay but this is the first uh, session the ordinary differential equation okay so whenever you have equation that have differentials in it we call that this is a differential equation before we learn about solutions let me give you an idea um, let me give you this example of equation this is example of what we have just a random uh, equations for ordinary differential equation this is an example of the ordinary 
differential equation. Notice that we have how we are going to write. We sometimes write with d, like dy dx, okay? and we have this. See that this is two. This is the order. Okay, this is the order. So we call this because this is the highest order two. So we call this because of this. We can say that this is the second order of ODE. Sometimes we can also rewrite this in terms of prime, like y double prime plus y prime minus 12y equals 0. This is also okay. How about if we have more than 3? For example, if we have, uh, let me write d, 4y dx4. Okay. You can write this with y, but to differentiate, to distinguish this with power, we write 4 in bracket like that. Okay? So I hope this is clear. Okay, so if you see me writing y with, it seems like a power, but you, you see that it has a bracket. Then it means that this is the fourth order. Okay, fourth order DE. Okay? I hope that's uh, clear. And of course, if you see the, um, the, the if you see the first order, the second order, uh, see that we don't have any any power, right? We have don't have any power. We call this linear. Okay, we call this linear. Um, first order or second order okay, order them let, let me write this linear de okay, linear de either first or second order so if we have for example um, y prime and then squared this becomes not non-linear and okay, non-linear. Okay. This is non-linear. Okay, so non-linear. This is non-linear. Okay. And I think um, I'm not sure whether we will solve the non-linear one in our course this summer, but for sure. The linear one is a must. Okay? It's a very, very basic. If we have, uh, I think nonlinear, we will solve some parts okay, that is uh, easy. Let me make it small first to make it a good. Good display. Let me write here. The size. Okay. Okay. So uh, another example, okay, so let me here, example for nonlinear, we have 1 minus y, y prime, plus 2y, let's say equal e, and another equation is d squared y, second order, and then we have sine equal 0, and we have uh, d. 4 plus y squared equals 0. Okay, let me give you uh, 
so this one minus y let me write in red this makes the equations nonlinear okay and also uh, this part makes this equations nonlinear okay also this part is nonlinear okay so nonlinear 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 so every components in equations that makes the equation itself nonlinear, that will be um, the sign that the equation is nonlinear. Okay, so this is because sine is non nonlinear function. Okay, this one minus y is coefficient depends on y, that's it's nonlinear, and the last one here y squared is of course nonlinear because the power is not one okay now the solutions then how can we take the solution of our differential equation so one of our goals okay in the this differential equation is to find a solution okay so let me just give you the definition first how the solution can be so any functions, any functions um, uh, phi uh, defined on the interval and possess at least n derivative. Okay, so there is many many derivatives okay? that all continues in the interval. And when you substitute, you substitute the differential equation, it will reduce the equation to the identity. Okay. And that is the function phi will be the solution. Okay, will be the solution. So perhaps uh, aside from the solution, we need to think also the interval. Okay, the interval. Okay, let me give you. Uh, Let me give you the example. Okay. Let me give you example or illustrations how this works. Okay? Uh, maybe give you some some physics equations like the Newton's okay? from from the Newton's law. Okay, we know that the force in Newton's law is mass and acceleration, right? If we think the force and the, the mass acceleration in terms of uh, differentials we can write this in terms of let's say we are having uh, just one force like this without any any so it's, it's from the middle air from the mid air you have ball that is going down and so we can say that the force is just having the gravity okay and m and then the, you can write some well, if you have another accelerations, for example, maybe you throw the ball. Okay? You throw the ball, it's going up and going down. So it's, 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 the ball is throwing up like that and then going down like that. So we can write this as uh, the acceleration as uh, Let's say if we have the positions as function of y, okay, then with respect to time, if we differentiate this y, y uh, this, this function y, uh, maybe we have the um, y equal, let, let me just write y is the distance. So if we have, if we differentiate with respect to time, this will be the velocity and the acceleration will be our 
second derivative, right? Let me just write with y double prime of n of t, okay? Then we can say that our gravity, negative gravity is our second derivative, okay? Or acceleration, okay? Now, of course, to get into what we have, so let's say we, this is our differential equation. To solve this intuitively from calculus, we know that if you want to reverse the differentials, we can integrate, right? So let's let's integrate first. Integrate with respect to dt. Now we will have, let's say, this y double prime because it becomes y prime and negative d dt. Which is uh, integrate, this will be just t. And don't forget to add a constant. You can add constant left, right, but it doesn't matter. Just add on the left, let's say, plus a constant. Now, this still, still having different shields. It's not what we want. Okay? We want to, um, to remove all the different shields. So we integrate once more. We integrate once more. Integrate, integrate with respect to dt. So this will be g t squared over 2 plus, um, let's say, c and then t and then plus another constant, let's say d, okay, and equal point of t and we can say that um, this will be one typical solutions right one typical solution that are possible to make right and you will see that we have two constant here so what is the constant now this is something that we need to solve to later on okay we can solve these two constant with initial value problem okay? initial value problem so we need to know initial condition so for example if we know like when y zero is equal to something or when y prime zero equal to something then we can find this this two, okay. Then we just plug in zero and check the other uh, numbers. So for example, if we check y zero, then we can find the constant d, and we can check for c. We can check y prime zero and check with the y prime equation, okay. And that's why we need the initial condition to get the, to, to get the, the exact value what we have for the constant. Let's say we are having this as the initial conditions as y not like that. For y prime, we have the velocity not like that. Now we have okay. Now we have the y uh, y zero is our d. Okay, if we check through our conditions there, if we plug in t equals zero, and also when t equals zero for c. This will be our c0. And this is becoming what we have in the physics that we call the kinematics, right? Where is this negative star? Okay. Now the question arises from, from what we have here and from what the previous introductions um, assume. The question arises is, when do we have solutions? How many solutions? And how do we find the solutions? Okay, this is three essential questions that is important for 
our topics okay, for uh, for the differential equations okay, to, to know how we can tailor the solution how we can verify the solution okay okay so first is to, uh, to answer these questions, first, let me just give you some idea of how to verify verifications, okay, how to verify. Okay, now imagine uh, we, maybe we can have some example. We have y double prime minus 4y prime plus 3y equals 0 and check whether the y 1t equal e to the t is the solution of differential equations okay now what we have this y equal e to the t let's say we differentiate two times okay let's say differentiate one time still e to the t and of course this second derivative also e to the t now if we check through our substitutions we say e to the t minus 4 e to the t plus 3 e to the t and if we see the um, the solution here is it seems that it's it's true that it's become zero right so we can say that this satisfies um, uh, the, the equations uh, y t e to the t satisfies uh, differential equation okay so we can write the solutions is probably but we can write a constant in the front because if you put a constant, then of course it's also, so we will have all with, with, with a constant, 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 and still the same answer, right? So, so it, it has a, we, can, we call also family of solutions, okay? So we can have a constant. And of course, if we check another, another, uh, solutions. Like for example, if we have y2, let's say y2 is e uh, 3t. If we check the differentials, this will be 3 e 3t. And if we check the double prime, this is becomes 9 e 3t. If we check through our uh, solutions here, then this will be 9 e 3 t minus 4 multiplied 3 e 3 t plus 3 e 3 t okay so we have minus this is minus 12 plus 3 it's become minus 9 plus 9 it's also become 0 so it's also satisfies and we can also plus this uh, adding this constant is satisfies okay so this 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 two solutions here this two solution two solution satisfies our differential equations now back to what we are having here we have these three essential right? three three question when do we have a solutions or solutions like we have many solutions and how many? How do we find? So, probably 
we can write also these two solutions are gonna be right here. Uh, we have y1 e to the t and we have e y2 is e with power of 3t. So this contains general possible solutions that we can that we can write as so we can have this y1 and y2 in one general solutions then that is still satisfies our um, our differential equations right okay this is just uh, one example from uh, verifications okay another way to look at is uh, let me give you another Oh, by the way, um, maybe we'll have some breaks, okay? five, maybe five minutes breaks, maybe uh, 10.30, okay, 10.30, a little bit breaks, and then we continue five minutes okay, after that, okay? So let's say we have um, d by dx is x, y, half and we need to check whether the y equals 1 over 16 with power of 4 uh, let me write here verify y is a solution of differential equation on uh, interval on all x. It says all, all x. Okay, we can say that we can differentiate this, and we can say that this becomes okay, and we can say that uh, the x y. We can, uh, or we can just take this to take this x, x, y half is equal to x and then plug in the y is 1 over 16 um, x with power of 4 and half. So taken that as x, x squared over 4. And x squared, x cube over four, and it's it has the same value. Then that means that we are verifying our solutions. Okay. So each side is the same for every number x. So this becomes our solutions, and you see that the y half is one over four x. Uh, squared, this is by definition is non negative. Okay? Non negative of the square root of this x with power 4, 16. So if we take this 16, it's always, always. So this 1 over 4 x squared is non negative, right? Just to, to, to take note. So uh, we need also to consider the interval. Okay, consider the interval. Okay, another way to, to see the solutions is we call the solution curve. Solution curve. So suppose that the graph, okay, 
of a solution uh, phi of our ODE is called a solution curve. So since the uh, wait, since the phi is differentiable function, it is continuous on the interval by definition. Okay. This is a, just a trivial definition. Okay. So of course, if you dif have differentiable function, the differentiable function should be continuous on the interval by definition. Now, I hope you can differentiate or you can distinguish uh, the function and solution. It's not the same, right? Okay. So... If we have the um, if we have y equal one over x, okay, and x is not equal to zero because of the domain, uh, we can write and take some time to graph this. And perhaps this is our, our functions, right? This is a function. So this is functions. Now, if we have, let's say, um, x dy dx plus y equals 0. Now, if we try to look at, and let me just give you the solution for this, is the sol one of the solutions that uh, y equal 1 over x okay, is a solution, is a solution of this de. So means that the solution, the solution itself is a function defined on interval, some interval that is differentiable and satisfy the equations. So, okay, so if we check uh, the dy dx of this, of 1 over x is 1, a negative uh, 1 over x squared, so we will have negative x equal y, uh, negative x plus y equals 0, so y equal x, or uh, let me just write y minus x. So, our solutions for this in the graph, we can say that we will have this as our solution. Okay? But what the difference is, this is 1 over x from 0 to infinity. Because we need to make y minus x equaling 0. And if you think on any, any x that is negative, I don't think that is possible, right? If you check, check x, check x on a negative value, I don't think that's possible, right? So I hope you see the difference, okay? So the domain and the interval in the uh, 
and the differential equation also plays an important part. I think we can have uh, five minute breaks. Okay, five minute breaks. So I will come back again, maybe 10.35. Okay, 10.35. Okay. okay, and um, also these notes, uh, after we finish one topic, I will share to you, okay? Uh, professor. Yes? I have a question. How about the video you're going to upload by the end of today, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you.
Okay, I think we can continue. Okay. So, uh, from what we have, uh, to find a solution, uh, for solution itself, it can be more than one, it can be family of solution, it can be a solution curve that we can design. Okay. All right, now, uh, solution itself, uh, typically, there are two types. Okay, we can say the solution as um, explicit and implicit. Let me just give you the definition here. Uh, let me just give you um, explicit and implicit. Okay. Implicit solutions. Okay, explicit solution is, I think, in our study in calculus, uh, explicit solution is the solution that you you get the numbers. Okay. Uh, for example, if like the previous, we have the differential equations of, for example, um, x y with power of half, right? And we say that uh, y equal one over sixteen x with power of four is the solution of this. We call this the explicit solution. Okay. And also, if we have the uh, dy dx x um, plus y, like from from the previous one, also uh, these y equal one over x is also an explicit solution. And in terms that if we have um, y equal zero, if we have y equal zero, this is also explicit solution for both of this de. Okay, this is also explicit solution for both of this. Okay, we can say that it can be our solution. And Sometimes, uh, later on, we will see that it's not always the case, okay? Our solution is not always exact and explicit. Sometimes, we are having some DE, okay? So, DE, it, uh, it, it, it can be, or it, it's having, uh, it's the not always, uh, let me write, do not always lead to explicit solution. Like for example, y equal, let's say, phi of x. Okay, it's the same terms in your textbook. So, but but what this means is, it doesn't have to be like this. Okay, so for example, uh, this is an equation of uh, like, like like a function, right? Like a function. We have y equal one over sixteen x with power of four. Okay, we call this as explicit solution. So, so in the later part, we don't always find the equa this e this type of equations. Okay. So, it doesn't always lead to explicit solutions. And we call. Um, we uh, we are having uh, expressions g x y equals zero that probably defines solution but implicitly. So the relations g of x y equals zero is said to be an uh, Implicit solution of uh, of ordinary differential equation on an interval, provided there exists at least one function that satisfies the relation as well as the differential equation on the interval. Okay. 
this four means the the four means the f x y y prime y n equals zero. We call this is ordinary differential equation. The the general terms. Okay, we can say that we have this. Okay. This is the general form. I forgot to mention this. So a general form of ordinary differential equation. Uh, we can say the normal forms also in terms of dy over dx is f of xy. We can also say that. Okay. Um, okay, explicit, implicit. Okay, but before this picture, let me just go to the example. Example on what we can do in this implicit solutions. Okay, for example, we have dy over dx is negative x over y. Now, if you think, and let me just give you the solutions directly. If we think the x squared plus y squared equal 25, okay. And we learned this uh, in implicit differentiation, if you remember your calculus one uh, about implicit. So if we have this, okay, let me, let me write one more here. If we take differentiation we take derivative we take this becomes 2x right plus y squared take implicitly becomes 2y dy dx and then equals zero because we would like to have that y is actually a function of x so that's why we need to have the chain rule the dy over dx for the implicit so we know that this is implicit and we know that if you rearrange this this becomes our our solutions or our differential equation so this means that this is okay this is our solution but we call this solutions is this is implicit solution because if we are having uh, or if we remember that if we try to solve this part, if we try to solve as it is without implicit, we can write down that y squared is 25 minus x squared. And we can say that y is having this two value plus minus of 25 minus x squared. Okay. If we try to graph this, if we try to graph this, then this will be the positive, right? And this will be the, the negative one. Both of these are, are, are exact and explicit solution right explicit solution but what implicit means is when we have this and we try to derive and it becomes and we can solve this through implicit differentiation we call it this this implicit solution that's this the, the summary okay. so the circle if we take the circle this will be the implicit solution so x squared plus y squared equal uh, 25 is implicit solution. Okay.
okay and another terms that I think I also mentioned before is the family of solutions for example this one this is a family solution so this is solutions it say that this is solutions of uh, some solution curve of the x y prime minus y equal x squared sine x of course this is a solution that is taken from um, graphing uh, software but we might have uh, families of, of solutions okay so it means that uh, it can be more than one parameter okay, family of solution so not, not exactly just one solution curve but it can be many many solution curves that is if you look on the graph, okay, it has the same behavior. It has the same property. So we call the family, a family of solution. Okay. Of course, if you are looking at the, uh, the equations, it has the, the trigonometric. Okay. Of course, trigonometric will be having um, relations with especially sine it will have a relation for cosine right and if you see the characteristic of the, the trigonometric it has the uh, the same behavior same um, let's say if you see the amplitude it goes down goes up goes down goes up and all the, the families they have all the, the uh, same same uh, principles and another way to think of the solutions is we, we will have we call this piecewise defined solution okay, so piecewise defined solutions okay let's say we have y equals cx with power of 4 so I say this is uh, let's say we verify so this is all the introduction i i haven't mentioned how to find the solution what which method to find solution we just talk about what is the solution how to verify and look on what kind of solution that we have okay we, I, we haven't talked about the method uh, the method is the later part okay so let's say this y equals cx with power of four is the solutions of Let's say it's the solutions of uh, x dy over dx. Or let me just y prime again. I think it's more simple. y prime uh, minus 4y equals 0. In interval And if we look on the graph, okay, the graph on the left, this is the sum some solutions of the uh, differential equation. So, so this is some solutions on the e. Now, we can take the, the solution here, okay, as a piecewise defined solutions. Which means that 
if we take the uh, let's say the y prime is for cx cube okay let me write so x multiply with 4 cx cube minus 4 cx 4 this equal to 0 so it's true right it's true but then if we look on the interval if we look on the interval when x is less than 0 and x is greater than 0 or or equal this will give um, different perspectives in how we write the solution so we can write the solutions okay when the constant so this will be also based on on how the constant will be so if we take the constant if we if the constant is negative let's say negative one this becomes 4x4 plus 4x4 it's it doesn't work right it doesn't work so we need to define the solution okay so we need to define becomes these two two solutions here so uh, the piecewise this is for negative for x negative this is for x positive or also equal we need to also include zero because zero is part of the uh, the interval also so this will be particular solution of equation. So these solutions cannot be acquired from, uh, so if you look this CX power of 4, we are going to define this C, okay? We are going to define C. So we need to, to define C when, when C is negative one and when C is one, okay? And which one is works, which one is works, okay? So of course, uh, if you check one by one from the interval, you will see that we need to take this to different constant okay to make the solution true okay. so then we have um, the the graph the solution graph for for this one okay okay I hope you get you get the idea okay you get the idea okay I think the last two Singular solution, same sum of differential equation. I think that is, uh, we can skip that. This, uh, okay, now, uh, okay, if you want to. If you have any questions, you can uh, just chat in the chat box. Okay. We haven't yet go through the important uh, topics. Okay, this is still it's, it's actually still introductions. Okay, but it will it will be some parts will be included in um, in the in the exam. Okay, but of course it's just um, general part. Okay, now, because we are from previous sessions here, 
we just verify the solutions to the equations whether it's true okay then if we got our functions okay what do you want to ask mm -hmm. How can we define explicit and implicit? Okay, that's really good. Okay, now let me give you an idea. Okay, If you can define, for example, we have this, okay, dy of dx, x uh, square root of y. Um, we can define the solutions as this y from from our verification this is our solution okay and it explicitly says that it's, it's the solutions but okay if we try to where is my or here if we try to look at this x squared plus y squared okay how do we find this as our solution okay. it doesn't say that it is uh, a solutions in a so one one track is having a positive another track is having negative so we have two uh, explicit solution but this can be solved by taking this y into squared and you get the explicit solution so in a summary in a short in a short answer whenever you find a so uh, in uh that you you predict as a solution and when you try to differentiate usually when you are using the implicit differentiations that is actually implicit solution Okay, that is actually implicit solution because usually when we graph this um, solutions, you will have some certain loops that it cannot be. Usually, you have uh, you have functions, right? You have functions, uh, and how to determine functions? Like usually, you have y is a function of x. So every domain x will, will be resulting in y. But if we have this implicit one, let's say it's like, like a circle like this, it, it's actually, uh, it doesn't really have the, um, a sense of our, our function here, right? We have like some some set of domain. It becomes some set of range. So for example, uh, if you have like just this, okay, you have perfectly x and y, right? But here, when you have x, for example, here your y is here. When you when you larging the x, your y is going down, and when you have another one you have two different y right For one x resulting to different y so this can be possibly one way to think of probably this will be implicit solution okay. so it's, it's not of course it's not a one-to-one -one function as uh, as a regular regularly seen okay as regularly seen and perhaps that this is implicit okay but implicit explicit is not really that matter okay in 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 in, in the later part because we are going to 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 have more um another method to uh to look on okay later we will have um the existence is the solution exists or not and is the solution unique or not that is more important rather than looking at the explicit or implicit because we don't really discuss much later on whether it's explicit or implicit because we are going just to um, 
is to focus on whether it has the solutions or it has the unique solution or not. That is probably more important in our differential uh, equation. Okay, but that is how how we can uh, try to to define in in our in our um, using calculus. Okay, using calculus that we have learned. Okay. Okay, now <clears throat> to give you more idea, uh, let me just go through what we call uh, the initial value problem. The okay, initial value problem. Or sometimes in your textbook, usually they write IPP. What is the initial value problem? From the previous slides, we have verifications of uh, verification of solutions, right? Whether the solutions are satisfy our DE or not, right? So this is uh, satisfies or not, right? And then in the initial value problem, what we hope is after we verify, usually we have still have a constant, right? Like for example, uh, before we we have this, uh, like for example, like having C like that. So by the initial value problem, or when we have the Newton's law, we have two constants: the kinematics one, the y naught and velocity, right? So what we what we hope is we can solve. The constant in the solution in the uh, yeah let's say the solution okay, solution and then by solving C we can rewrite the complete solution Okay, to give you an idea, let me give you an example. Uh, let's say we have y prime equal to y, just an easy example here. And let's say um, we, we, we have um, predictions that uh, probably the solutions will be C, E to X. Okay? We have a initial value conditions that is when X is zero, is equal the equation equal three. Okay, so perhaps we start with verify that this is true. So we take derivatives. Okay, that's the the answer. Okay, and then we take this uh, that is substitute, and I think it's true that this is will be equal to so satisfy our differential equations, right? And now, from our initial conditions, we can write that it will be equal to 3. So, our constant is 3. So, our y of x becomes 3 e with power of 2x. So that's that's how we we are going to to need uh, the initial value problem. So let me write in the more general terms. Okay. So if we need to solve the differential equation that is d with n d x n, and this is our functions x y y prime dot 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 and y with power of not the power, it's differential differential order, derivative order. And we need to have subject to EVP So the more we have, the order we have, it means that it can also predict how many initial condition that we need.
Okay. So, for example, the first one here is just this the the first order, right? Which means that we need to have uh, one initial value problem. If we have the second order, like for example, y double prime, then we need two initial value problem. We need to have two condition. Okay. So this is the general general term. So if we have uh, dy dx, okay. Let's say we write in a in a normal form like this, then we need to have y x zero y zero. This is for first uh, first order de. For the second order, then we need to have. This is our equation, x, y, y prime, okay, and we need to have two initial value, okay. I think that is um, intuitively you can you can see why it's true, okay. Okay, I think not really important, the other one. Uh, okay, maybe just give you idea. Uh, let's check what we have. Okay. Okay, let me go through. Okay. Uh, okay, let me go through here. That is the initial value problem. This is um, just an example of, of, of the graph that we might have. Uh, this is for the first order, so this is first order, second order. Okay, so remember that the first order, we need to have just the one initial value conditions. For the second order, we need to have two conditions. Okay. The conditions when the it's the uh, y itself and the condition for y prime. Okay, now if we look on um, this uh, first order and the second order, we see that the y1 here is actually our slope, okay? So it's not only needed, okay? So for example, this one, of course, we need to 
find initial uh, we need to verify the initial through initial conditions but we need also to verify the y prime for this uh, value y, y1 y1 in our graph here we can see that this is actually the slope of the of the of the graph the slope of the graph okay so we not only we want to find the solution for the differential equation we need to find the solution for the slope okay so, so we need to to make sure that it passes through the slopes okay it passes through the slope so for example if we have uh, so we need to, to make sure that it's 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 having uh, the, the same slope as y1 okay So if we move on the point, we need to make sure that all the points having the same slope, okay? And now from this initial value problems, um, well, I would like to to give more um, more idea is about the existence and uniqueness of the solution okay. like from the per, uh, i think three essential questions okay when the differential equation have solution okay and then we can break down the questions becomes um, existence and uniqueness okay existence and uniqueness so first does a solution exist okay. if exists is it unique so what does this mean the first the existence it asks you whether the equations this de has solution or not and then if the solution passing this x0 y0 okay and a unique is when we can certain there will be precisely one solution curve that pass through the point that we call unique okay unique And it will be given this definitions. It can be break down in a theorem for existence of a unique solution. Okay, let's see this our rectangle with region R. Okay. So if we define the region as a, this like a box from A, B, C, D in Y in X and Y in X Y plane. And it contains the point x not y not or x zero y zero in the interior. And if the functions and the partial are continuous on this region, then there exists some interval that is, let's say, we have this interval uh, with h. Okay, with h, it's contained in a b and a unique functions defined on the interval that is a solution of the initial value problem okay let me give you an example first and then maybe we can look more about what this is about okay so let let's just go back to f So let's say we have this function okay. or probably if we connect from the previous 
differential equation. We have different equations. That is uh, dy over dx is equal xy. Up. And let this dy over dx uh, become our function. And we can write this as functions equal xy with power of half. And the, the, the partial, remember, if you write a partial, we are using the notations called the Leibniz notation. It's something like d, but it's having more curvy, right? It's, it's curvier than, than d. So d or do f partial or partial f partial y equal. So we are going to differentiate this xy with power of half with respect to y. So we are just going to differentiate y. And we are going to treat x just a constant. So x is just a constant or word x. And y square root is equal to, it's become 2. And then it's actually square root y. We can write like that. And from here, okay, from here, we can conclude that from this partial f partial y, it shows that the functions continuous when it's defined by y positive, right? Because we have and the bottom, we, we, we cannot be zero. And of course, it should be greater than zero because of the domain of the functions, right? Okay, I hope you, you get why it's, it's why it should be positive. Okay, so Because it's continuous on some interval, we know that this will be um, a unique solution. Okay. So if we have, so if, uh, let me write if, we have the initial value problem, let's say uh, for this differential equations, and if we have conditions, initial conditions for x equal to y equal 1, then DE have one unique solution. So there will be an interval that define the functions that we call the interval of existence of uniqueness. So we can call that this is the interval of existence or uh, uniqueness, you can say. Okay, let me go through uh, what, what it what it's means. Okay. Okay, let me look up the another example. Okay, so uh, let me let me just rephrase uh, what it means, okay, to get more idea of, of what is uh, existence and uniqueness. Okay, uh, let me let me rephrase what what I mean. So, in summary, okay, in summary. There will be three cases. 
for solution in differential equation. First is infinity many solutions. Uh, infinitely, infinitely many solutions. through some points uh, one unique solutions like uh, we mentioned in the theorem existence and uniqueness of course we need to look up in the neighborhood uh, or maybe that neighborhood, but it's not really good to say that. In nearby points, okay. What this nearby points mean is as long as it is nearby the point that we are having our initial value. Okay. And three. And this is the next uh, the next um, case maybe there will be no solutions at that point so if we take a look our let's say we have a point P. So what does it mean is we need to have some sort of interval, right? We need to have some sort of open interval So for a curve To be continued we need to have some sort of open interval So for uh, dy dx equal function x y, and if we have the initial condition, let's say y a equal b. Of course, this is at a b, right? Then if the function uh, continue. around a b this is actually the same thing as the theorem before but i'm trying to rephrase in more simple words okay and it has an open interval at x equal a then at least one solution exists on that open interval. X equal A. Okay. If the function not continue for open interval at but if it's if in the x equal a if this is not continued then then a solution is not mm, not guaranteed at that point so not sure whether it, it has solution or not because it, it, it has this continuity okay and then x equal a cannot 
be the end point of the interval. So the thing is, the point that we are going to observe, it needs to be at the center. Okay, not center at like in the middle, but it needs to be in the interval itself. Okay, not the end of interval. The second point is if partial. Uh, let me write in green one. If partial f partial y also continues around the point at x equal a or at, at point a b as we define the initial value then solution to differential equation at a b is unique unique on open interval around x equal a. Okay, so first, the existence is to, related to continuity. The uniqueness is related to the result of the partial f partial y. That should be continuous. So again, let me give you an overview to, to make sure that we can apply this in, in every um, ordinary differential equation that we have. Let's say we have the, the uh, simple, simple situations, simple cases. Let's say we have dy over dx is 2x squared y squared. And we have the value that is negative 1. Okay, first, if we want to check the continuity, of course, we check, let the functions become, the differential equation become our function f. And of course, from, from what we have here, we can have x and y everywhere, right? We don't, doesn't have any restriction, so it continues everywhere. So no problem here. The second one is we need to take partial. Take partial. We have uh, 2, 2 is become 4, x squared, y, right? And also, it's, again, it's the same thing. It's continuous everywhere. We don't have any, any restriction. And we say that at this point here, at uh, 1, negative 1, DE has one unique solution. Okay. Okay, let me, let me give you more. Okay. So this is uh, the initial value, and we have x, l, and y. So let's let's take the f as x and y. Remember, we have the ln, we have the log. The log need to be for ln. Y need to be positive, right? It cannot be zero, it cannot be negative, right? Okay. And then we take the partial with respect to y. We are having x or y. And this is also, so it's continuous for y positive. And this is also continuous for y not equal zero. So if we take this interval, then we can say that the this is one unique solution. 
for so it exists and it's unique for y greater zero So at uh, one one, okay. Don't forget to at the point. So this is just to make sure or to to see whether uh, at 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 one point at one point that we observe, we have the unique solution. Okay, so so that is how how we go through. So we check the continuity. And the second, we check the un the the partials, okay? Whether we the partials is continuous or not, okay? But for example, let me give you an example that is uh, not clear because this is, of course, we can get easily unique solution. But what we have if um, uh, dy over dx is x minus y and then y to equal two okay if we take this as uh, functions then we need to make the conditions to be continuous that is this should should be uh in our conditions okay to make it true so the x is should be uh, greater than y but it's it, it it's 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 not possible, right? It's not possible because at this point, it's 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 supposed to be at the, this two two, right? But two is two is equal with two, right? Okay. So so because of this, then we can say that it it um, cannot guarantee the existence. Okay, because it has a contradiction with the initial value. So so at at two two we cannot guarantee its existence. But in any other point maybe we can have. Okay, maybe we can have. Okay. Another one, if we have um, y dy dx um, equal x minus one. Okay. And the initial value is y one y1 uh, equals 0. So we have a point one zero, right? Okay, now we take the functions and let functions become x minus y over y, okay? I think we can have continuity for y not equal zero, right? To become defined. Okay. But of course, if we see that if y is not zero, then it's also contradictory, right? Okay. So it cannot guarantee the existence at one zero, okay. To help you get the baby idea of what we have here.
Okay. So I think uh, that's most of the introduction. Let me go through. Okay, um, maybe going through this. Okay, another important thing in our uh, differential equations is a mathematical model or formulation for some physics or phenomena. Okay. So of course we we bring the it's, it's, it's mathematical models, but I will just take this slightly. I hope I hope you have familiarity with some of the uh, topics in, in, in the models, especially uh, simple models for, for physics like like the spring, exponential, uh, decay. Okay, I hope it's, it's, it's simple enough. But let, let me just rephrase this. Uh, to make a mathematical models, we need to have assumption and hypothesis, right? Well, it depends on what kind of uh, models we have, right? And then <clears throat> we need to express, okay, express the assumption, okay, express assumption in differential equations. Okay, that's the first thing. To, to make up make out the mathematical models and then we need to come up with a mathematical formulation whether it's fit or not with the with the conditions and try to solve it tries to solve the differential equation whether it's fit or not okay solve and when you solve of course, you, you you have a prediction, right? A predictions like like a solution candidate at least. Okay, so we can we can say that uh, we we have a solution. So obtain solution. If we can display, we can dis let's say display display the prediction, right? Of our model. You can use uh, some software if you want, MATLAB or I think some cloud like GeoGebra, they can provide you with some uh, graphing um, graphing calculator. So I think it's it's good and it's free, right? And then check check the models, model predictions. with some facts or known values, known values. And if there is some maybe error or maybe some differences, then we can tweak our assumptions. Maybe we have wrong assumptions, not really clear. So we can have, or maybe change assumptions a little bit maybe. So change assumptions, and we are doing the cycle loss. Right? Okay, so we we we, um, we will have more more uh, mature model. Okay, so I think if you already take some some project with some professors, and maybe it's related to simulations, okay. like you know you want to know the like the population dynamics and you want to to make a models that fit in with the situations like for example um we have the um of course we have the models for disease right like our situations now we have a covid 
of course the mathematicians or many scientists they they provide some models that goes through this cycle so we have some assumptions hypothesis um, and then express these assumptions in in terms of equations differential equations maybe we need to define the constant how many constant that we need to make and um, what's the assumptions and try to 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 check and have the cycles and when we are having some iterations more and more iterations makes our uh, function of our models becomes more um, more mature okay so that it it will be fit with our situation of course the models may be the models this year and next year may be different because we have different conditions okay? we have different conditions like maybe maybe i'll take example from like the covid it has some mutations right it has some mutations and uh it it, it has different results right like maybe these mutations will be harmful or maybe this mutation is not it can be uh, different conditions, different results, and maybe we need to make more, more assumption, more hypothesis, and we need to to change the model time and time time after time. Okay. Um, I think let me let me give you give you the uh, some of the mathematical models that we might have okay we might have in in our uh, in our topics in differential equation okay so first is that usually comes up is the populations we can express this by the differentials of P, the populations is equal to that we have a constant k and we have p <clears throat> so so what this does does this mean okay. and why we need to have this this uh, differential so differentials is of course it, it's 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 uh, a rate of change right rate of change so what does it mean is if we have uh, some population P, the rate of change of that population is proportional to how large the population is. For example, if, if P is large, then the DPDT becomes also large. If P is low, then the rate of change is also low. You can think like the, the animal, like, uh, like cats, dogs, or bunnies. Uh, you have you have bunnies right like this. You have two bunnies. It gives you another one. Or maybe if if, if this is having uh, from four, let let's say from four, it gives you another one. And let's say it's have another one also. And if it's giving you by the uh, it, it, it's it's breed through exponential so the more rabbit you have the more the larger you might have if you have the, like on a small rabbit maybe you need if if it grows for sometimes maybe it's just a small population so what does it say is we have a proportional so the k itself is called the proportionality constant okay and this is the populations at at t let's say t equals zero so we have this population dynamics another one is we have the radioactive decay
we have d a t equal k a it's it's actually similar what we have in populations but the difference is the decay means it's decreasing so if in population we see an increase in numbers and in decay we see a decrease in numbers okay so k can be positive can be negative in here and this we call decay this we call growth or it's it's increasing growing Okay, we can see from like um, uh, radiations for uh, for some mass, it becomes uh, decreasing. The mass becomes decreasing because of the radiation and so forth. And law of cooling from Newton. So this is temperature, this difference temperature, so temperature um, surrounding, okay. surrounding the medium. This is temperature um, of body at T. And maybe the other example is spread disease, because uh, I think it's important to know how we can uh, evaluate or make a model. So let's say we have the x dt equal k x y. K is same proportional constant. So the x, y is the um, interactions. So uh, we assume, assume the number of interactions. is proportional to x at time and y t okay so this is x y it's, it's proportional to x y this is the number of interactions and suppose okay suppose um, Population is equal n, okay. And if one person uh, in fact uh, spread the infection or infected, then okay, then we can argue that the interactions if we have this. This will be equal to n plus one. Okay. And uh, yeah, it, it depends on how the assumption is made, but we can give the definitions through here that if this happened, then k x and then y we can exchange to n plus one minus x. So this means that this is n populations one person infected or it, it's spreading from one person okay. and the whole thing here is the interact it, it can be de described as interaction okay.
and another um, models that is can be uh, inscribed is in chemistry and in electrical we have the circuits but I think I think um, it, 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 it doesn't really important to know uh, the details like how the, the mathematical models okay, what it is like in the physics term in the chemistry terms um, I will give if, if, if it is supposed to be in the exam then I will give you the details okay? so you just need to think on how to fit the models okay no need to know uh, what is the phenomenon is exactly about but uh, just to know that if you already know the description um, the, the models then you can just use it okay. usually if you see the textbook you, you see the questions it doesn't give you the context which models you need to, 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 to use but I will give you the models that you need to check okay so don't worry about the, the mathematical model okay? and we can have more interactions uh, when we have a discussion in uh, in some exercise or practice okay okay Okay. okay, do you have any questions? So feel free to, to ask. Okay, I will give you some intro for uh, next sessions in... Oh, yeah, yeah. Sure, Doran, what, what would you like to ask? No. Maybe you need to check your microphone, or you can write the text if you want. If the growth and decays at the same time, oh, you mean how to model it, right? Mm, good questions. I think uh, that will be different um, different formulations. Okay? So we might have some parts that is growth and some parts that is decay. So two formulations. I think that will be best best fit for the solutions. I think okay. unless you are going to uh, to make a new formulation. But if, for example, if you have a, there is something growing, something decay, the best way to approach is make two, two solutions. Okay. Solution for growth and solution for decay. I think that that is the best way to to, to make solution fit into the um, the case. Okay. I hope that that's clear. Okay. All right. So maybe we have two. Okay. We have two because. Uh, Decay and growth, they have different assumptions, right? They have different assumptions. So we have different formulations. I think that will be a better choices. Yes. What, will you, what do you want to ask?
Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you can, you can write the questions if you want. Linear or not linear? Okay, that is depends on. Uh, let me go back a little bit to. I think I write, but I think write too small. Let me let me go check. Okay, here. So linear or non-linear? Uh, first depends on the form. Okay, good. Depends on the form. The second is the property or behavior of the of the uh, the curve for example if you have trigonometric of course trigonometric is behaving like like having some amplitude right like that of course that is not linear right and um, if you have like a power like y squared or maybe a y prime squared it's also non-linear So that is uh, basically um, the, the non-linear means. Okay? So um, when it, it, it making the, uh, the equations, making it not making the, the whole equation not linear, then it becomes non-linear. Okay? The fourth order, uh, the order. It, it means the order, uh, when you have the first order, second order, third order, fourth order, it means that the order is the, here. If we have this two here, it's second order, right? But the equation is linear. Okay, now I think I, I know the problem. Okay, wait, wait. Let me give you more. Uh, I mean, let me write here. Okay. I think I, I think I know the problem. Okay, if we have okay, if we have d or let me let me write with prime, y prime, or maybe y double prime plus y prime equals zero. Let's say we have this. We still say that this is linear. Okay, this is we can say second order linear. Okay. But when we have, let's say y prime. Let me power with two, and then plus uh, x y. Let's say it's equal zero. This is first order but non-linear okay because it have this squared here okay another one if we have y and with four like that remember it's not a power it's the order which means that this is derivatives Fourth, fourth derivative. It's it's fourth derivative. So it's fourth derivative so right here. It's fourth derivative. So when we have this, let's say we have y double prime. We have let's say y is equal let's say zero. This is fourth order. But is it linear? It's linear. Okay. Unless you make something in the equations that make out that y is becoming maybe having power, then it's not linear. So now we are focus our uh, variables that we are going to observe is y. Okay. So when y, y prime or y second prime or y fourth, y third, the prime. It's just as it is without any power, 
then we can consider as a linear okay but when we have like for example if we take the this y becomes squared or this become um, squared then it's becoming a nonlinear Okay, I think I think that's the best way. So we need to to, uh, to distinguish between the order and the linearity. Okay. Uh, but I think uh, in the first, I think in the first half we will just consider, or we will maybe mostly uh, solving the linear one. Okay. I think that is the very very basic and very I think important. Because many model, many mathematical models based on the linear one. Okay. Okay. Uh, we still have a little bit of time, but I think I think I would just go through um, just a small section about the slow field. Okay, slow field. What is the slow field? Or in your textbook, it's called the direction field. Consider that we have, uh, let's say, dy dx is a function of xy. This is the normal forms of our differential equation. So sometimes, okay, sometimes, uh, not every differential equation gives you an exact solution. So, for example, if you look on y prime squared and then plus 1 equals 0, it's really difficult to find the real function that satisfies this, this differential equation. But however, however, some differential equations can be... Um, uh, or let me write some DE solutions can be found analytically. And how okay, how how we find the solution is by checking the slope. Okay. <clears throat> so checking the slope at some point. Okay. So for example. If we have, I mean, let me go through here, and maybe it's too big, let me make it smaller. Okay, if we have this slope that is equal 1.2 at 0.23, okay. So we can say that, that um, F23 is equal to 1.2, the slope. And maybe in another another point we have uh, maybe one one we have something at zero one we have something and we will have some sort of slopes in every point that we if we draw a little line like this one slope and maybe we have slopes here maybe maybe we will have slopes here maybe slopes here or maybe slopes here up like that okay and if we draw all the slope we can we can take some some guessing or some predictions that probably our slope or our solution is the one that makes up all this slope so maybe more than one solution. So maybe one solution that probably we'll have is maybe going here, maybe going here, and maybe going here. There's one solution that we can take. Or maybe the other solution is maybe going here, going here, going there. Probably, okay? But what we can do is we can have the slope field to help graphing the... Um, the solution. Okay. 
So we begin with the, the simple concept from the calculus, which is dy over dx. We can say that this can be defined as slope. Is slope of function y function x. Okay. So it, this is give the um, slope of tangent line, right? Slope of tangent line, if you remember. Now this line segment, this line segment, let me erase first. Okay, let me give you more clear picture. So this line segment is called the lineal element. And all this lineal element, if you draw, we call that as the directional field or slope field. Okay. I think I will just stop until here. Okay, and we will continue the slope field in after a few hours after this, and you can have lunch for now, right? So I think I will just stop by this um, this slope field and see you next afternoon in the afternoon. Okay. So I will stop the recorder.